the piece that we really want you to hear is that your inner being is always broadcasting to you in this high, pure frequency that has no resistance within it. And in order for you to receive it as it is being offered, your frequency has to be equivalent to it. Think of your mind as a transmitting and receiving mechanism rather than as a clump of flesh. So when you focus in a way that deactivates all these signals, these signals that are chaotic or that are resistant in nature, and in doing so, then the law of attraction will help your mind to respond to the transmission of who you really are and only of who you really are. Now you've got a strong, pure, non-resistant, non-scattered, non-challenged signal. And we've been saying to you that until you actually sit and quiet your mind and actually feel that sort of swooning detachment, then these are just words that don't mean anything to you and you're not getting much from it. You've got to do it. Achieving a quieted mind is not the simplest thing in the world to do because you've trained your mind to be very responsive and your mind wants to be responsive and law of attraction causes it to be responsive. So anything that's active in your vibration is going to pick upon things that are out there. So if there's something going on in the house somewhere else or in the street or in the nation or in the world that has your attention, you can kind of pick up on those things. And so it's like having a receiver on that's picking up on signals and you just got to kind of turn the receiver off altogether because it's going to pick up on any signals that are active within you. So the first thing that we want to say to anybody who's just beginning to meditate or who wants to have better results from it is give yourself a break and acknowledge that my brain doesn't really want me to shut it down, but I'm going to do it this way rather than a lobotomy because it's a lot more efficient. So I'm just going to quiet it. I'm not shutting it down. I'm just quieting it. I'm quieting it because I want to redirect it to some higher frequencies. And it's easier to have no thought than to change your thoughts. It just is. It's easier. Let's say something's really been bothering you and you decide to sit to meditate. Well, while you meditate, you're just going to brood about it. You'll just stew about it. And every thought about everything about it is just going to come into your mind. And at the end of 15 minutes, you're going to feel worse than you did when you sat down, usually, because that's just the way the law of attraction works. Well, we want you to be nice to yourself when that happens. Don't beat up on yourself. Just say, oh, I've got too many active thoughts for right now and pick another time. First thing in the day is a better time to do it because you don't have so much going on. Esther doesn't answer emails. She doesn't look at her phone. She doesn't want anything to disrupt what's going on. She wants to quiet her mind. So then when you sit to quiet your mind, find something to focus on. You can pick anything you want. Esther usually picks the sound of some motor in her house and fixates on it. And sometimes she has to bring her mind back to it 20 or 30 or 40 times because her mind doesn't want to focus on that boring thing. Her mind wants to focus on other things. But as she keeps coming back to it and back to it and back to it and back to it, not beating up on herself, just refocusing and refocusing and refocusing, eventually she'll feel that feeling, that feeling of no thought, that feeling of alignment. A lot of people have used meditation for a lot of different things. And we are not in disagreement with what anybody wants to do about anything like that. But we think it's a good idea for this purpose of tuning to the frequency of your source to quiet your mind so that there's no competing thought. Because when you stop thought altogether, you'll stop all resistant thought. And when the resistant thought is mostly inactive within you, your vibration will rise. It just will. And when it does, a thought unrelated to thoughts that you were thinking or have been thinking or usually think will occur to you. In other words, you will be the receiver of it. Now, the thing that we like so much about this method of this is that the thought will be a thought that's not hard for you to understand. Esther laughs when it's a thought about moving furniture or when it's a thought about going somewhere or eating something because she thinks those kinds of thoughts all the time too. But there's something about the enthusiasm with which that thought comes that helps her to know 
that it's a thought that's coming from another frequency. It's a thought that she's receiving, not a thought that she's thinking. And that's the only question that we want you to ask yourself. When the thought comes, just receive it. And if you're going to think about it, just think about it really softly because if you get thinking, then you're not releasing thought. But just receive the thought and then ask yourself the simple question, did I receive that thought or did I think it? And you'll know by its nature because you can't go. I'll give you some physics understanding. You can't go from a quieted mind to an enthusiastic thought. Law of attraction won't let you. So you didn't think it. You received it. You see what we're getting at? Now, can you understand why we are saying to you, it's easier for us to teach you to quiet your mind and have no thought and then receive a thought that we're offering than it would be for us to talk you out of the thoughts that you're thinking and talk you into the thoughts we're thinking. Because every step along the way, you've got another excuse about why you don't have time right now to do that or something like that, you see. Where if you're just quieting your mind, it really is the fastest way to go there. You follow that? Well, here's the thing. If it's really a thought that Source is offering to you, the impulse within you will be strong enough that you won't be able to deny it. You won't say, should I? You'll feel like you want to do that. You'll feel like, that's a really good idea. And often what you'll say is, this is the best idea I've had all day or all week or all month. Well, it's not an idea. It's an idea that we're having together. That's why there's momentum with it already. And if you'll just go with that and follow it through. You see, because in meditating, you got ready to receive. And once you receive the thought, once you receive that thought and you consciously acknowledge that you did receive it, now you're ready for the next and 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 the next. Now, the first day, that thought might not go very far because you're insecure in it and you're not really trusting or the thought doesn't seem important enough or you're just used to being ornery and resistant about everything so you don't go very far. But the next day when you meditate and another thought comes, in time, it's through the exercise of doing this that you'll come to where you will know unequivocally. You will know. It was easy for Esther when she began receiving us because she didn't have thoughts like this going on in her mind. And it was easy for Jerry to know it was Abraham because he never heard Esther interested in anything like this ever, ever. And after, he would talk to us for hours sometimes. He was so eager. He had so many questions gathered up. And so on we would go and on we would go and on we would go. And when it was finished, Jerry would say, what was that like? And Esther would say, what do you mean? You say, what was that like to, to have all of that power and clarity and brilliance pouring through you? And Esther said, it was like talking about what I'm going to have for dinner. Because when she's in that receiving mode, she can't really feel. In other words, when you are at that frequency, it's compelling. It's not something that you're thinking about thinking about. It's just something that you're receiving. You see what we're getting at? So what keeps you from trusting it? Maybe not doing it enough. Maybe not quiet in your mind enough before you receive, maybe trying too hard to receive. That's a common thing. A lot of times people want to tap into this and they want to start receiving because they want to start bossing people around. We want to extend this conversation just a little bit. You may have heard us talking like this before, but this is a good opportunity to take it beyond what we have discovered together before. So we're talking to you about the receiving mode and about you've asked and what you've asked for is in the vortex, but it's a vibrational version. And now you're looking for ways to bring it from vibration into your manifested reality. How can I get the money out of the vortex and into the bank? How can I turn these thoughts to things? How can my life reflect the reality that I've been asking for? How can I stop noticing the things that aren't happening and start feeling the things as they are happening? How can I start enjoying the evolutionary process rather than wanting it to manifest and then find it? How can I have fun in this process? And so we've been using some terms like turning thoughts to things. You witnessing thoughts turning to things. It's so delicious. And when they are your thoughts turning to your things, it's particularly delicious. So. That's one way of getting you to begin thinking about that. The other statement that we've been making is 
get ready to be ready. Well, that's what deciding that you're going to meditate and then meditating is you getting ready to be ready. Because if you haven't quieted your mind, you're not ready to hear what Source is saying. Esther is. Esther's been doing it for so many years. She can sit in the quiet place and she can hear from us or from Jerry or from nearly any dearly departed. She can receive those messages because she's tuned in. She knows what it feels like. All she's got to do is just briefly quiet her mind. She's been practicing it and you can too. But in the beginning, you've got to get ready to be ready. And if you're not willing to quiet your own mind, then you're not ready. Oh, you might have some catastrophic experience where you're about ready to drive off a cliff or drive in front of a big truck or something that's going to take you out of this life experience is about to happen. And you might have some remarkable life-changing moment of clarity and alignment because the asking is so strong, even though you're not really ready. And you'll have some sort of a life-changing experience, but... You really don't want to need big trucks to run over you in order to get into the receiving mode. You don't need tragedy to launch you into that stronger asking. Let's be clear about that. If your desire is strong enough about something, it doesn't matter what you believe if you've got strong enough desire. But usually, your desire and your belief are interwoven so much that you really thwart your desires with beliefs that contradict them. And so that's the whole point of meditation. When you meditate, you quiet those beliefs that are thwarting your desires. And you've got a whole vortex full of desires ready to reveal themselves to you. Say that better. A whole vortex full of desires that are already revealing themselves to you, but you're not ready. So you're missing them. Sometimes you'll get a little impulse to do something and say, oh, no, I'll stay in bed. We know. So when you are ready to be ready, so meditation is getting ready by quieting your mind. And then when that first thought comes and you acknowledge that it came, then just sit in that readiness for what comes next. And it might be more thought about it. It might be that you're capable now of receiving more thought, which will cause more momentum within you. And then a feeling of impulse, a feeling of movement, a feeling of motion, a feeling of getting up and doing something will come. And what you will begin to notice is that as you follow through with those impulses, that your rendezvous points, in other words, in this vortex, cooperative components are already gathered. They're gathered vibrationally. And those physical counterparts to these non-physical or textual creations are roaming around around you and your inner being knows the timing of these cooperative components in their relationship to your physicalness does that make sense to you so that if you're ready to be ready and you're in some proximity to someone else who is ready to be ready the odds are 100% that you'll hook up with something that will hook you up to something that will hook you up to something. And as we give you this information, sometimes it makes you think, oh, well, i got to get hooked up, hooked up, hooked up, hooked up, so I can get over here to what I want. We say, yeah, we want you to get over there to what you want. Over here is where the physical stuff is. We're demonstrating that. You've got the hang of that. But yes, we want you over there where the full-blown physical manifestation is. But what we want more is you to experience the exhilaration of having gotten ready to be ready and having been ready, and having received because you are ready, and having known that you received because you are ready. Because once you get that, once that happens, once or twice or thrice, once that happens just a little bit to you, that's how you come to trust it, you see. And so now, often Esther will just sit and quiet her mind, and she'll say, okay, I wonder what I'm going to catch this time. It's like casting a net casting a vibrational net out into the sea of all things in her vortex. What piece of it are you going to guide me toward fulfilling now? In what way are you going to surprise and delight me now, universe? Universe based in kindness and goodness. Deliciousness. Really good. <laughs>